scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open or what you conceive. From big to small shall today be revealed. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah. ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the inevitable journey and episode number 5 from the phase of death يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O ye who believe Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه says if you hear that call open your ears because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing you to do something that is good for you or he is forbidding you from doing something that is bad for you Open it, open your ears, not literally, but hear. Let the word penetrate your hearts. O ye who believe, have consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The consciousness that he is deserving of you. And don't die but as Muslims. Because this, what will take you to Jannah, sooner or later. Hadith, Abi Hurairah. في صحيح ابن حبان رضي الله عن أبي هريرة he said من كان آخر كلامه من الدنيا لا إله إلا الله دخل الجنة listen to that piece that a lot of people do not know about وإن أصابه قبل ذلك ما أصابه because we believe as Muslims that people Muslims who commit major sins and they fail to repent and they die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the choice to have them taste the punishment in the hellfire for a while or to spare them again. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, even if he has to go through some punishment in the hellfire for a while, but the least that la ilaha illallah will do for you, it will take you out of the hellfire. At least you will be there by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spare all of us and make us amongst those who enter Jannah insha'Allah without reckoning and without punishment. And we'll, we will learn what, how to do this insha'Allah through the inevitable journey. And of course the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the facilitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the key. But la ilaha illallah will spare you from the fire at least. That is why it's so precious of a word. Mu'ad ibn Jabal fi mustadrak al-hakim he said man kana akhir kalamihi min ad-dunya la ilaha illa Allah dakhala al-jannah he will enter jannah. Now a lot of Muslims they think that saying la ilaha illa Allah at the time of death is so easy. I share with them a statement that was made by the author of the tafsir الحافظ ابن كثير رحمه الله he said من عاش على شيء مات عليه ومن مات على شيء بعث عليه are you living لا إله إلا الله right now are you implementing لا إله إلا الله right now if you die now if you die now if you are not implementing it you will not be able to say it unless Allah wills. But if you are living it, Allah will help you to say it. Brothers and sisters in Islam, that is the misconception that a lot of Muslims have. There are people out there in the Ummah who say, listen, all I have to do 
is at the time of death. Make sure that you say, La ilaha illallah. How do you know? يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant that steadfastness to those who believed in the dunya to say, La ilaha illallah. But you never implemented La ilaha illallah throughout your life. And then you want to say it at the time of death? <laughs> Forget about it. Unless Allah wills for you. But you're gambling. You're gambling your chances. In order to get it, you must live it now. You must implement it now to be able to say it at the time of your death. Brothers and sisters in Islam, how can we live La ilaha illallah? What are some of the things that can help us to say La ilaha illallah at the time of our death? Understanding the meanings of this word. How can you live something that you do not understand? I'm sorry. فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ You must learn لا إله إلا الله. What does it mean? بالله عليكم Ask an average Muslim right now to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for five minutes without violating الْأَسْمَاءُ والصفات. We know that in order to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Muslims, we must speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from verses in the Quran or authentic hadith in the sunnah because we have not seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can you talk about Allah when you have not seen him from your own words? You must take from the guidance. Ask a Muslim right now to talk about Allah for five minutes without violating Al-Asma' wa sifat He will stop. That's part of La ilaha illallah. Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah. A lot of shirk in the ummah. People praying to the graveyards. People praying to people. People taking oath on others than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk. Shirk. Violation. So, step number one is to learn the meaning of the word, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and then implement it. And then be steady, be steadfast in observing that word, observing the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al istiqamah. In the Ladina Kalu Rabbun Allah, they said, Our Lord is Allah. And then they are steadfast. Tumastakamu. Those are the people who will be comforted at the time of death. And those are the people who will be enabled to say, La ilaha illallah at the time of death. Another very important piece that can help you, a sidq. Be truthful about it. Wallahi akhi, if you are truthful in your heart, that, O oh Allah, help me to say, La ilaha illallah at the time of my death you will be able to say it. في سنن النساء حديث شداد بن الهاد رضي الله عنه He narrates the story of that Bedouin who came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said, O oh Messenger of Allah, if I join you, if I follow you, and if I fight in the cause of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and if I die, will I go to Jannah? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him yes. So later on the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa migrated from Mecca to Medina and he asked some of the companions to keep an eye on this Bedouin. And in one, of the, in one of the battles, there were some spoils of war. So he divided a share for that Bedouin. And he told one of the companions, go and take it to him. So he went to him with his share from the spoils of war. The Bedouin brought it back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he told him, "What is this?" He said, "Well, this is your share from the spoils of war." Of war. And then the Bedouin told the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "I did not follow you to get this. لا من أجل هذا تبعتك. I followed you, so I'll fight in the cause of Allah, and then I get an arrow right here, right here, and I die." 
and I go to Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, Asdukillaha yasdukuk. Be truthful with Allah. Allah will be truthful with you. Allah will deliver you if you are truthful. Later on, this companion fought in one of the battles. He received an arrow in his neck. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the companion who reported the incident to him, to the death of that companion to him, where did he get hit? A huwa huwa, right there in that place he pointed. He said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, صدق الله فصدقه. He was truthful with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was truthful to him. It's your call. It's your call, akhi. You have to be truthful. If you want to die as a Muslim, you have to be truthful about it. And at the same time, you have to seek the means. Taqwa is a key to die as a Muslim. Dua is a key to die as a Muslim. This is the supplication of Yusuf alayhi salam. Tawaffani muslima wa alhiqni bil salihin and make me join the righteous and the pious. Brothers and sisters in Islam, be truthful and stay away from the things that can divert you from dying as a Muslim. Shirk is one, hypocrisy is one, having bad friends is one, a key. Look what happened to the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a key. Look at the type of friends. الْمَرْءُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِهِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ Where will you find people who will remind you of لا إله إلا الله at the time of death? But people who hang around the masjid. People who go and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his houses. This is where you should start acquiring friends. These are some of the things that can help you maintain good deen so that you're able to say La ilaha illallah at the time of your death. We will take a short break and we'll be back with the inevitable journey. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain. Ask Hoda. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Hoda. I have two questions. Please go ahead. You can read it in Arabic and you can also understand the meaning in your own language. The different tafsir and interpretation of the meanings of the Quran uh, are available in almost every language that exists on earth by the grace of Allah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention you drink it with. Salih from Egypt. His father has the way and he asked about how can he help him. Very good question. Can they give a zakat to any of the dawah sisters? The ibadah or the act of worship is a part of the unity. Justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the inevitable journey. Before the break, we were talking about the importance of dying as a Muslim. Brothers and sisters in Islam. من عاش على شيء مات عليه ومن مات على شيء بعث عليه whatever you are doing right now is whatever is how you will die look at you right now would you like to die doing what you're doing right now with your lives 
How do you know that death is not going to come to you right now? Why didn't you start from here? You see, the inevitable journey is not to talk about the end. One of the greatest things about learning about the inevitable journey that it sends us to the beginning, to begin again, to repent, to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah will accept you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He will accept you. But all it takes is you returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to live Islam the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered it to you through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to share with you some of the stories of those who lived their lives working for Islam and see how they died. I share with you the story of Nuh alayhi salam. You see right now, we're telling you to say la ilaha illallah. And we're asking those who are around the deceased to prompt gently, we have to gently prompt the deceased to say la ilaha illallah. Look, Nuh alayhi salam, Actually, as he was departing this world, he was prompting his children or his son in one of the wording and the hadith في مسند الإمام أحمد حديث عبد الله بن عمرو بن العاص لما حضر نوح الوفاة he called upon his son and he told him I want to leave you a وصية I want to leave my will to you. You see Nuh عليه السلام spent his life calling his people to Tawheed. 950 years calling people to Islam. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا Indeed, we sent Nuh to his people and he spent amongst them 1,000 years, but 50, 950, calling them to Islam. This is what he harvested at the time of death. At the time of death, he's calling his son and he's telling him, أُوصِيكَ بِلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Make sure that you keep up with La ilaha illallah. You see, we're supposed to be prompting him to say La ilaha illallah. It's the other way around. And this is the reward. And again, one of the keys to say La ilaha illallah at the time of your death, if you give it as a da'wah to non-Muslims. And I call upon our brothers and sisters all over the world to go and spread La ilaha illallah. Because if you deliver it to the non-Muslims, Allah will grant it to you at the time of your death. Ibrahim alayhi salam, someone who was stripped naked in front of a fire because of la ilaha illallah. Because he refused to give up la ilaha illallah. He had to leave his homeland for la ilaha illallah. Look, as a reward also, at the time of his death, he tells his children, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبِ يَا بَنِيَّ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى And Ibrahim enjoined upon his children and Jacob alayhi salam, Allah has chosen for you the deen. Don't you die but as Muslims. Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه who was known with his excellence once it comes to enjoining good and forbidding evil. While he was passing away, and the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, a young man enters into his place where he was laying in the ground after he was stabbed. And then the young man praises Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, in some of the wording of this hadith, other wording that it was Abdullah ibn Abbas. Ya Amir al Mu'minin, Abshir bi Bushra Allah lak, glad tiding, O commander of the faithful. You were the companion and you were. And he started saying, as the young man was departing, and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh dying, he saw that his clothes 
were touching the ground. He said, bring him back to me. Left your clothes. It will be cleaner for your clothes. And atqa li rabbik. And a sign of righteousness and piety for your Lord. Here he is. Even at the time of his death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables him to enjoy good and forbid evil. Because he lived his life enjoying good and forbidding evil. Uthman ibn Affan, radiyallahu an Uthman ibn Affan. The night before he dies or he was killed and stabbed, he sees a dream. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr and Umar told him fast tomorrow because we want you to break fast with us. He fasts. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, and he was known of his love for the Quran and he was stabbed while he was reciting the Quran. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an Ali ibn Abi Talib he was giving his wasiyya, his will to his children and he died saying La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we know people these days, right before they, their death, they request cigarettes, smokes, they request drugs, they request musics to be played for them. We know also people, Right when they are about to die, they actually want to count money. They request money to count because that's what their hearts were consumed with throughout their lives. They were slaves to the dinar. They were slaves to the dirham. Losers, ta'isa abdu dinar ta'isa abdu dirham ta'isa abdu al-khamisa, ta'isa abdu al-qatifa. Losers are those who make themselves slaves to the material of this world. Enslave yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of resurrection, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of death, will enable you to remember him. Brothers and sisters in Islam, be amongst those who remember death a lot, is one of the keys to be able to say la ilaha illallah at the time of death. Because if you remember death, you will be able to prepare for it. في صحيح ابن حبا في سنن ابن ماجة حديث ابن عمر رضي الله عنه هما the, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked by one of from the Ansar who is the best person الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said the best in manner الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked ومن أكيس الناس and who is the most intelligent prudent person الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said أكثرهم للموت ذكرى someone who remembers death a lot وأكثرهم له استعدادا and those who prepare for it remember death will come to you sooner or later and what matters is how you ended your life the final stance is what matters regarding your journey a question that you have to ask yourselves now are you content are you pleased with the way that you are right now would you like the angel of death to come and take your soul while you are doing what you're doing right now if the answer is yes hope in Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon you the mercy so that you will be insha'Allah amongst those who say that kalima at the time of their death. And if you're not, what are you waiting for? 
Do something about it. Spare yourselves. Save yourselves. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, O ye who believe, ma lakum idha qila lakum unfiru fi sabirillah, itha qaltum ila al-ard, araditum bil hayati dunya min al-akhirah, fama mata'u al-hayati dunya fi al-akhirati illa qalil. O oh, ye who believe, what is wrong with you? Why, when you're called to march, march for the cause of Allah, so that you can make it to Jannah, you cling to earth. You want to continue doing, I will. Let me just finish college. Let me just finish the high school. Let me just make some money and then I will be, Akhi. I make a contract with you that the angel of death is not going to come to you before you finish your ambitions. You don't know. Death comes by all the sudden. Death comes by all the sudden. You cling to earth. Are you happy with this world instead of the hereafter? What is this world in relation to the hereafter, in comparison to the hereafter? Brothers and sisters in Islam, work for the hereafter. Work for the minute of death. Insha'Allah, بإذن الله تعالى don't miss the next episode of the inevitable journey we will talk about the journey of the soul once it leaves the body the next episode do not miss it because we're going to talk about the soul of the believer and the soul of the kafir the kafir the disbeliever being taken out of the body and the journey that it makes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and back, of course the soul of the believer will make the journey, the soul of the kafir will be rejected, and then back to the graveyard, and we'll continue talking about the graveyard. Let's learn about the inevitable journey, so we get ready for it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span, span, span. What you did in the open or what you conceived From big to small shall today be revealed Your deeds shall then be or faith Heaven and hell shall be brought into vision Allah alone shall make the ultimate decision To all brothers and sisters I'd like to say